and gentlemen, this is uh, David Murphy, publisher of the National Black Unity News. We come to you today uh, with this great interview about one of our editors in the National Black Unity News. We've been running a series of um, interviews to let you know who and what some of our editors do you know not only do they put the information in the paper but they have a variety of other services that they um do as well as promote and today i have a very interesting gentleman uh by the name of Fiola, i think over the Fiola Yamoja. he has been with us from the inception of the publication and uh, we appreciate his support we appreciate the information that he serves our community and we appreciate him in, in, in general but you know, he's a unique gentleman because um, I'm gonna share this story about him that you know, when I first met this gentleman, we set up an appointment to meet one another. And we met at this restaurant and people who, who knows me, you know, I do a lot of research. You know, I mean, you know, for example, I built a website. And, uh, and it has 500 pages to it. I'm not a typist, I'm not, you know, school, but you know, this is one of the largest websites in the nation it's, it, until this day, when you build something from scratch and you're not a typist and you just plop. And, and then I had uh, a database attached to it that went up into 262,000 members. And I had to fit, finally, you know, just plop the name, the address, who who they were, what where they were at and all of that stuff. Can you imagine how tedious that was, how much input I had to do that, you know, how much time it took to do something like that? Well, I finally met my match at this restaurant. This gentleman, Yamoja, comes there with boxes of information, you know, and we talking, and he was telling me uh, about his great mother and, and, and some of the things that, she, you know, she was inspired with, and he piled up. He piled up so much information on that table, you know, and 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 I always say documentation beats conversation any day. People can talk about this and talk about that, but when you have proof, when you have documents to back up what you're saying, that's a, a whole different level for a lot of different folks. But in any case, um, but this gentleman has, I mean, it's so much to what he does. I mean, it's massive. And uh, and so we're gonna take this one step at a time, though, because a lot of times, you know, a visionary. Sometimes, you know, I'm a visionary. You know, if I told you the whole thing about the National Black Unity News, a lot of you wouldn't comprehend. As a matter of fact, a lot of you wouldn't even believe it because a lot of us can't see that part. And unfortunately, those who are visionary, the vision is given to them, not to the masses. They share the vision a little bit at a time, and that, that's where people can comprehend it. But in any case, Mr. Yamoja, how are you doing today, sir? I'm doing fine. All uh, right, I'm glad you're doing fine, sir. And um, before we get started, uh, I just want you, before we start getting into the book, the mission, and everything else, you know, let's let people know just a little bit about yourself. You ain't got to tell the whole story, just, just a little about why you do the things that you do, so to speak. Well, I was born in the late 40s during the Jim Crow years. My mother, who taught me all about life, was born in 1920. She was adopted by an ex-slave who taught her a great deal about life, who passed a great deal of that knowledge on to me. And it astounded me how our people was treated and learned about life during a time when life wasn't promised to them each day of their life. And I've always wanted to know why people was treated the way they were treated. My mother taught me how to live. And for some reason or another, I wanted to teach our people how to live. So I began to wonder why, why couldn't we live? And for years, I tried to figure that out. So in the last 50 years, I developed a method of teaching our people how to live. And 
Of course, the people that are listening to me don't know me, but I've traveled the world. And I've learned about how to live. And it was given to me through the voices and the life experience through women. And I learned that women are the strongest people on the face of the earth. And I don't take anything away from men. But men are a little different. But women, their strength, the tenacity that they have for life and teaching you how to live, they teach the children and they teach the men. Although the men run everything, or so they think, but the strength of a woman has lightened up my life, and the strength of the black women have made me as strong as I am today, and I've been dedicated to teaching women how to be who and what they are and hope they eventually open their eyes and see. Okay. Let me ask you this. Now, you mentioned your mother who, who you got this great inspiration from. And uh, and she gave you the blueprint how to proceed. And um, and, and um, before, you know, I, I want to share something with somebody. Do you have your, you know, uh, 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 you, know you, you had uh, authored a book on behalf, you know, of your, your your mother, you know, she gave you the blueprint and, and you took the time, your energy, and, and you transcribed this into the book called, what is it, 52 Weeks? 52 Weeks, Words of Inspiration, a book for the female gender. Amen. And, uh, and, 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 and I just want to ask you again, how did this book come to be? How, how, how was you inspired to write this book? Well, when I was traveling, I would talk to women because I like children. Because I know children are future. And always children are brought up by the women. The men, children, and the girls, they're brought up by the women. Although a man always calls himself a man, he don't realize that he is raised by a woman. They say, you have to learn to be a man from a man, not realizing that he's learned to be a man from a woman. Without that woman teaching him how to be who and what he is, he would never be anything. So I just learned everything that I know from the strength of a woman, and I am as strong as I am because of what she taught me. And I want people to know we have to learn to listen to the source and not the people who learn from the source. Because once you learn something, you take what you learn and go your own way. Okay. Now, um, you, you, as I mentioned earlier, you know, you, you did a lot of research. You, you put so much, in, you know, what you was taught, and then you you took up the gauntlet and you start running with it, and, and, and you you published the book uh, inspired by your mother, and, and and the resources that she taught you, and then you took it a little step further and uh, did a little bit more research, and uh, and therefore the book came about, and, um, and, and 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 as men as well as women, I encourage you first and foremost to read this book. Look through this book because, like I said, it's more than it will meet the eyes. And this book is, is, is you know, it's really it's truthful. And you know the truth; they say it will set you free. But um, you know, this is some ter terrible times. You know, we're going through right now. It's a lot of uproars about so many different things, diseases, and everything else is going on, and people are not sure about tomorrow. And um, Thank God for people like your Mojo, who are who who is a visionary, who and not only a visionary, but he was a great student, because like I say, he listened, he learned, he transcribed, he studied, 
and, 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 and therefore you come up with the book. And that the book is just one thing. The book is more like a blueprint, but there's so much more behind this. But the first thing, you know, uh, you more than I have talked on many occasions about the mission that that he was sent sent on, and uh, and, and and he, you, you as you already heard, he mentioned women, the power of women, and uh, and and oftentimes, you know, in society now, everybody knows I'm in media. Media, yes, it is a powerful tool. Media will have you going one way, or this way, have you believing in this and believing in that. And, and they will show you documents, falsified documents and everything else to prove their point. And it could be a bald face straight up, a bald face lie. And so like I said, there's only one truth. And, um, and so in order for you to, you know, to get the full gist of what we talk about, I strongly suggest that you go and get the book 52 weeks. And not only that, go to, uh, we'll have this information at the end of the, in, in the uh, credits of how you can go to the website and you can order the book and, and quite a few other things as well. But um, I wanna get back to this point because um, as I said, I've been, you know, I haven't traveled the world, but um, through access through the internet and everything else, I, I am a student, I am a researcher and, uh, and, and even the National Black Unity News is, is a solution or in the publication. I don't deal with, with a lot of who done this and who shot who and all of this kind. We try to find solutions to our issue, to our problems. And uh, and it's rare that you run across a person like Umoja, who, like I said, who has studied, took his time. And, and, and like I said, he produced so many documents. I mean, it just, you know, like I said, I don't want to tell you the whole vision because I don't know the whole vision myself, but I do know he has so much that he had brought to the table uh, 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 that, that would just, you know, astonish you. I mean, this brother is so far advanced that, that um, like I say, you would have to, you know, to, to, to get the book first. And there will be a host of other things that will be coming forth. You know, they are going to start a podcast where they would have women and they would have a, a lot of open dis discussions about women and, and this book, 52 Weeks. And, uh, and so if you are a woman and, 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 and you know there's more for you in life than what you, you're dealing with today, I strongly encourage you to get this book. Now back to you, Mr. M your Mojo. Uh, this, 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 the, the way things are, are ran today, obviously not, they, they, they don't have the masses in best light. In other words, I'm talking about those who are leading these countries, those who are, those who are uh, leading this country and those who are in power, you know, those who run media, would distort, like I said before, the truth. And, and when it comes to women, again, based on what your mo mother told you, your mojo, and you mentioned the strip of women, but I want you to get a little deeper than that. You know, uh, when it comes to running society, governments, and, and how they have placed not only black men, but women in general in bondage so that they won't know their truth. And therefore, that's why there's so much chaos going on in the world. But from your perspective, sir, what you've been taught and what you have studied, what is the true power? And I know you kind of mentioned you hit on it before. What is the true power when you say it come to women? You know, why are things so distorted? And um, from your perspective, why are things so distorted? Because uh, uh, if women have these powers, then, you know, why are people don't know these things? And um, and, 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 and you sitting on what I call a powerful place because, you know, like I said, there is the truth. And from, and from the truth, why are men or certain groups of men distorting the truth of, of, of real power when it could benefit us all? Why do you think that's going on? Well, what we're looking at is an indoctrination from thousands of years ago. Men always wanted to have the power. If you can go back as far as Julius Caesar. Caesar was a man who wanted to be a god. So many men back there, 
they wasn't satisfied with being powerful. They wanted to be gods. They always wanted to be something they could never be. A woman was always a woman. A man could not be without a woman, as I said. A woman taught a man how to be a man. The difference between a woman and a man is when a man gets the power, he wants to be the king of the hill. He wants to crush those beneath him. He wants to show everybody beneath him who and what he is, and he is the greatest. But a woman, she's all together different. She has this nurturing thing in her. So when she gets the power, she would reach out and bring her mate, her man, along with her to share the power. She wants to bring her family along with her to share the power because that's the nature and power or instinct within her. She wants to bring her community. She wants to uplift everybody. She wants everybody to share in what she is doing because that is the nature of a woman. She's not greedy. She only needs what she needs, and everything else should be shared. It should be given away. A man don't understand that there's no difference between $100 billion and $100 million. If you got $100 million, you can buy anything in the world that you need. If you got $100 billion, you can buy anything in the world that you need. So why do you need $200 billion? It's just a waste. People, as in men, want to have as much as they possibly can to waste. Women want to have what they need, a smart woman, not a woman that wants to be like a man. So many men want more, and they're teaching their women to want more. But a woman, nature says, I want what I need for my family. And her family is the world. So if she was in control of the world, the world would be a much better place. Mm. And not like a man. A man just wants to be the king of the hill. And that's why we have so many wars. That's why the world is run on negativism. If a woman was running the world, it would be run on things that's positive. That is my feeling. And then women got to take control. And then we'll see where we go from there. We will be back after this message. It is uncompromisingly imperative a female organization is created to execute and further the known and needed efforts of the Umoja quest. It will be the duty of the females to command an authoritative position in every facet of the movements the Umoja quest will be a part of. For over 245 years in this country, we have talked, and we are still talking about assembling the might of women. We, the women of this country and the women of the world, compose an unquestionable considerate collective mental and physical force, according to our needs and ambitious aspirations. As such, we have forgotten to tell ourselves, we simultaneously motivate the breadwinners, financial providers, and holistic protectors of our families. We have forgotten to tell ourselves, we jointly hold positions as wives, girlfriends, and many other things we must continuously execute the unwritten duties thereof. We, the women of the world, must impressively use our feminine power, it is a reality we possess, we can no longer play with, or allow to stay asleep. The rhetorical talk and thoughts we unleash towards one another and within ourselves, are some of the greatest reason we cannot truly move as the truth in the force we are. The minds of the man and mankind have been corrupted consciously and is unconsciously infective with a mind-numbing subliminal disease, placed there by the propaganda of those who sought to control him and historically have controlled him. This fact is not exclusive to the men in this country called America. It seems to be a systemic ubiquitous fact worldwide, among people of all colors. It seems the female gender has mistakenly looked at the male gender in our lives, as if they too were humans and just like us. We were wrong. Therefore, we must come together to allow ourselves to be who and what we are and allow the future to come and be a better place to live. Welcome back. Wow, you said so much, you know, and, and it makes a lot of sense as well. Now tell me something, you know, 
now that all these things have been, and you, and I know, I know this person that you have put many years in research and studying and, 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 and collaborating, and, and you put a lot of things together. And now you're at the point now where you're exposing the truth that was handed down to you. And, and, and first of all, I just want to take this moment to thank you for being that obedient. Because like you did say something that that's you know written whether some men want to admit this or not. You know, uh uh, you know, this as a man think if so is he. Some men think that they are this and they are that. They are above certain certain people or certain groups of people. And uh, and that's not the truth, you know. But but again, I understand that, you know, you had this great book with so much information in it, you had so many other things that that would assist so many people in so many different ways. And and, and, I, and, I, and I come to understand, because I will be working with you, that uh, you, you bring forth some um, tools so that you can share the word, the information that you have. And you already have the, a website up. You already have the book published. And I know you're writing several more that's coming forth. And then you also will be doing podcasting. And so in other words, it sounds like you're ready to launch this campaign full steam ahead. And um, if you, you, like I said, we don't never know where this podcast is going to go to, but I do know it's going to be broadcast to a lot of women organizations. It will be podcasted to uh, uh, special interest groups and things like that. And so since we have you here, sir, because like I said, you know, tomorrow's not promised to us, none of us, but um, what is your take? What will you say to these women? You say to these women about the podcast and about the book itself, and why they should uh, 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 read this book or or or, or 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 listening to your podcast that will be forthcoming. What is, what would you say to them? The um, what they would get something what something they would get out of this book in your podcast. I think they should read the book because the book is about the heart, the mind, the soul, the spirit of all women. The book it, within itself have no ethnicity in it. You would see no color differentiation in the book. There's no economical status in the book. There's no educational level in the book. The book is simply about femininity. And also in the book, I think they would really like the book separates femininity from masculinity. They will see who and what they are as females, or as it's in the book, femans. They will separate themselves and know who and what they are from then on and be proud to be who they are and what they are. Because men, for too long, has treated them as an object. As great as a female is, worldwide, no matter what color, no matter what economical status, no matter what educational level, men has always treated women as second-class citizens, which they're not. I wouldn't say women are greater than men. I would say they're egalitarians. But if I would have to put a status, and I say because of those nine months they go through to bring that man into the world, that just may give them a little step up on them. If I had to give them, you know. Yeah. <laughs> well, let me just say this to you, sir. Uh, because I've gotten to know you over, over these last several years, and, and, and I do know this gentleman, he is totally committed to the cause. And uh, and that's one of the reasons why I came on board with him is because um, as another visionary, I, I, I seen immediately that God has blessed this man with, 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 you know, with this vision. Because like I say, you know, how we say game recognized, game on, you know, but but this gentleman, like I say, he, he he has shown me so many documents of his works that he was inspired to do. And, and, and this is no joke, this is real. And I'm encouraging, I am endorsing 
uh, uh, Umoja and his projects because um, it is life altering, life changing. This is actually will, if people will listen, will change the world. And God knows this world needs some changing because it can't keep going the way it is. It's self-destructing from the air we breathe and everything else. You know, just take it, just you know, just atrocious what's going on and something got to change and thank god for a man like you Moses, like i say to be so uh, 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 obedient to that mission and, and um and i'm gonna encourage women men children to pick up this book read this book join the podcast have some discussions about how we can change. Cause like I said, we can't keep going the way we have been cause like I said, self-destructing. And I just want to say this in parting that um, there will be quite a few podcasts. Um, you know, they're going to be um, a, a lot of book clubs that will be uh, using this book for, uh, you know, for their projects. Uh, there is so many, like I say, so many tentacles to to uh, what uh, your mojo is doing. And, and, and see, we, you know, like I say, when, when a person is given a vision, that's why we're not getting in depth with a lot of things, because the vision is huge, it's large, it's life altering, it's world changing. And a lot of people can't take a lot of stuff at one time. So that's why he suggests that you read the book first, just read it for yourself. You sit down in your quiet place, open your mind, open your heart, and you read this book. And then you get back to your mojo, because there's, there, that's step one. And, and, and there's so many steps to that would be taking place that uh, I'm encouraging. Like I said, I'm endorsing, and I don't do that with anybody, you know, because like I say, this man is real. The information is real. It's truthful. I can't find fault with it. And uh, it's like, like I said, it's life altering, life changing. And you mold your man. All I'm gonna say is this, and straight up, it's very, it's rare, extremely rare. You run across a person who was obedient enough. And, and, and you know, you had to pay some serious dues. He had to spend some serious time to put all that stuff that he had put together. I mean, I mean, decades of time. So that just shows you right there, the dedication. And not only that, he listened. He listened to his mother and his mother much. He listened to the story. He, he went around the world himself and found out information himself. And, 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 and he's a great student. And so when a person goes through all of this and it's not about him, it's not about money, you know, not about making him this and this, that, he's he talking about helping us to help ourselves. And, 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 and you know, so I'm encouraging you and, and it will be coming forth soon, podcasting, uh, all sorts of things is coming up. And, and again, you mold your man, I appreciate you so much because like I said, you're a visionary, but you know that I always say this, many are called, but few are chosen. But even the chosen one, only a few will go. Because like I can say, when you've been given something as large as what you have been given, it's astronomical and that's a lot on your shoulders. But yet you, you chose to bear that weight. And yet you chose to go through no matter what. Because I've seen you over the years. You tried to enlighten people. But you know, again, man is kind of setting his way sometimes. But you know, open your mind. Open your heart. You think. Listen, learn, and, and and you read the first thing I suggest you do: read fifty two weeks, and it will be at the end on, on the end of this credits. You will find out how you can get the book, how you can access the website, and uh, and, and future things you can con you can get in touch with Mister Yamoja about the future endeavors that that he has coming forth. And so, ladies and gentlemen, before we shut this thing down, I'm going to turn the call back over to Yamoja. And, and let them have some, you know, uh, departing words for now. Because we're here, he's just beginning. Uh, if he wants to share anything about the book himself, or about the mission. Back to you, sir. Well, the only thing I can say about the book is that I think all females should read the book. All women should read the book because the book will help them. It will make them strong. The book is written to empower women, to make them who and what they are and any woman that read this book will not be the same woman she was when she started reading it because it will change. And in the book, many times it says a change has got to come. And in the book, it will tell you that the woman is the change that must come. 
All right. Well said, sir. And, and well done. And uh, with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, we want to thank you for taking your time to listen to this podcast. And you will hear, like I said, you're just, just the beginning, you will hear so much coming from us. Like I said, I'm assisting your motive because, like I said, his vision is large. And like I said, again, my steps are ordered for those of you who understand what I'm saying. You know, I don't like, I don't usually join people, but if they're on this great mission as he is, then, uh, 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 you know, all I can say, it, it is divinely inspired from my perspective. And so, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you for your time. Uh, at the end of the credits, order the book, 52 Weeks. And um, and I thank you for listening in. And I thank my brother, Yamoja, for his time. God bless. It is uncompromisingly imperative to create a female organization to execute and further the basic needs for life and living in this country and in this world. A change has got to come and it can only come from the female gender getting together and forming a global movement to help build the future. This movement is for the now generation, the children they will bring forth and the children of the children their children will create to keep us going as a species. If you truly care about the future and want to do what's necessary to cause it to come, we need you your unwavering feminine desire for perpetuation, and your ability to help make it a reality. Thus, we are seeking females with the desire and the ability to lead. For further information call our secretary Mr. Umoja that's right, Mr. Umoja it is time to reverse those stereotype roles call him at 443-994-5609.